Hi, I'm Casey and welcome back to my channel, I guess. This is giving me my May wrap up. If you're new here, I do book things, some blogs, not blogs, vlogs, tags, wrap ups, uh, some TBRs, that kind of thing. And today we're gonna do my May wrap up. Unfortunately for me, May was a very disappointing reading month. I had almost entirely three and four stars, which sounds like it would be really good. And it was really fine, but it's, I kind of like to have some like really big highs or some really big lows. And there was a very big low this month, but everything else was very middle of the road. And it was very enjoyable, but I'm honestly having a hard time remembering some of the books I even read, especially at the beginning of the month. So let's just quickly go through the books and then I'll do the superlatives. The book that I read that I did not rate this month was I Went to Die, But I Went to Eat Tokpoki, which I hope I'm not horribly mispronouncing by Beck Sihi. My one begrudging two star of the month was We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. My three stars for the month were Salt Slow by Julia Armfield, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Marino Garcia, Lemon by Kwan Yeo Sun, Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead, Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi, and Along the Salt Y Sea by A. Deborah Baker. My four stars for the month were the Map of Salt and Stars by Zin Jakadar. In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. The Best American Science Fiction and Fantasy 2022, edited by Rebecca Roanhorse. Slaves for Peanuts by Jory Lewis. The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. The Scent of Burnt Flowers by Blitz Bazawule. And The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. On to superlatives for the month. Typically, I would start with the worst and work my way up to the best, but we're gonna do the other way around because I have the strongest feelings about the worst book I read this month. So let's start off with the best. My best fiction for the month of May was The Best American Science Fiction and Fantasy 2022. I really think that this earned its title. This was really incredible. I loved every short story in here, except for one, which the only issue I really had with it, and it's the reason I didn't finish it, was it's written purely in a character's dialect, and it's very strong, and it was just very hard for me to to read at times and to get into and to fully understand what was going on. That's nothing against the short story in here that does that. It just unfortunately didn't quite work for me. I think if I'd pushed through it, I would have uh, I would have found it very interesting, just like I found every other short story in here. But honestly, everything in here was so good. I have a whole bunch of authors now that I'm extremely excited to read more from. And this is probably my favorite anthology that I've ever read. I think it was collated and edited so fucking well. It was just, it was incredible and I'm so happy to have read this. My best nonfiction for the month of May was Slaves for Peanuts by Jory Lewis. This is a nonfiction obviously talking about slavery and talking about peanuts and the intermingling of the two. And one thing Lewis does so well in here is telling particular people's stories in a very real and very engaging way. It was absolutely fascinating. It was it, it it's it it's that kind of perfect nonfiction that where when you're reading it it almost feels like it might be fiction these these people she brings to life so well in a way that it's sometimes hard to remember that they were real people and then she brings it back down to reality so regularly and it really helps kind of really shift your worldview and make it to where you're you're engaging with it and you're learning about things but you're also just deeply invested in these people's lives it was just it was absolutely wonderful and i highly recommend the audiobook if you're interested in this one on to my most surprising of the month of may and this has to go to the scent of burnt flowers by blitz bazawule this was really incredible this is a historical magic historical fiction magical realism story it's set in i believe one second Yes, this is set in the 1960s America and Ghana, I believe. And this is the intermingling of the past and the present with a whole host of characters, including Melvin and Bernadette, two young people who are set to be married as they have to flee the United States after something horrific happens to them. And they flee to Ghana, where Melvin knows someone in power there. And they happen to chance upon meeting uh, Kwesi Kwesen, a very famous musician there, and their stories intermingle as a little bit of mystical, a lot of heartbreak happens. It was absolutely beautiful, and it was really incredible to listen to. This is another one where the audiobook was just absolutely fantastic, and I thought it was just really beautiful. I knew 
very little about this going in, mostly. I knew that it was just on my want to read shelf and that it had sounded interesting at some point, but it just, it was such a lovely break from the, the stuff I typically read. And it was a little just a bit more grounded, but also a little bit more magical. A lot of what I tend to, tend to read tends to be a bit darker or have a lot more upsetting notes. I don't want to say complicated because this book is full of complications and nuance and intrigue, but it just, it, it interwove these heartbreaking moments and this just, this horrible events happening to these people with a little bit of whimsy and just, it was just magical. I can't describe it any other way. It was absolutely so surprising and I love whenever I know very little about a book and come into it and I'm just so thoroughly pleased and just delighted at the end. My most meh for the month of May was Along the Salt Y Sea by A. Deborah Baker. This is the second book in the Up and Under series, which is a young adult series that is almost like a spinoff or a companion to the um, to the Middle Game series. I can't immediately recall what that series is called. And this is just meh for me because it's just it's just a little young for me. This is, I think, the last book that I at least will grab in this series. I do think they're fun and they're very enjoyable and I think for age appropriate people it will absolutely be a success but unfortunately for me it just wasn't and it just ended up kind of flatlining. My most disappointing book for the month of May is I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Tokboki. This is a memoir of this uh, South Korean woman. It is notes from her sessions with her psychiatrist and her reflections on her depression. Now, I want to have a very big asterisk here that this is my most disappointing because I didn't understand what this book was. It was very good for what it was, but I wanted it to be more of an exploration of those feelings and that uh, and depression and anxiety and also a reflection on food because it was in the title. Um, is it that? No, it, but the, the tagline I believe is something of like notes from my, f with my psychiatrist or something like that. If I had known that I would have had a better understanding of what this book was and what it was going to say. And so as much as it was disappointing to me, that disappointment lies solely in me and not with this book and not with this author. On to what we've all been waiting for, and that's my worst book of the month, and that is this. We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. I'm not going to hold this up this whole time because I'm probably going to rant for very long about this. Um, this is a book that uh, Carl, my mimic box, selected for me. Uh, the video has not gone up yet because this book almost ruined my reading for the entire month of May, as I was pretty sure it was going to. I pulled this book from Carl and it I hated it just as much as I thought I was going to. I first heard about this book, I think on Reddit somewhere, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, a long time ago, several, several years ago. and. I added it to like my Amazon shelf and then uh, my my spouse's cousin read it and absolutely loved it and talked to me about it and I was like oh I've heard of that I'm interested in that and then purchased it for me for Christmas and then it sat on my shelves for over six years at this point I am fairly positive and it is just I hated it I hated it just as much as I thought I would I first was interested in this whenever this, oh, not six years, it would be, no, it would be six years. It would be six years. I'm doing my math wrong. Um, but my reading taste has evolved quite a bit since then, and I'm much more in tune with what I find enjoyable. And I won't just read something because it is popular or people say they like it, and then give it, you know, a favorable review or talk about it favorably just because I feel like there must be something wrong with me. No, I thought there were a lot of fucking things wrong with this. I, this just was not for me. And that is the primary reason why I got two stars. At this point, I should give you a synopsis of what this is. Um, a man named Bob Johansson has just come into some money. He has stole, stole, he has sold his uh, tech business and to like some major corporation and has signed up for this cybernetic program essentially that if something unfortunate was to happen to him and he was to die his brain would be frozen and then he would be he would be you know re 
reincorporated? No, uh, he would basically be reanimated at a future time whenever he could be turned into an android. And what do you know, he gets hit by a car 15 minutes later and then wakes up 150 years in the future or some shit. And he, in fact, is not going to be turned into an android because that company no longer in exists. But he is, in fact, being made a something to go out into the universe and explore. There you go. That's a pretty shitty synopsis for a book I found to be pretty shitty. Um, this is so, this was so infuriating. I'm so frustrated when I think about this. Um, my beautiful, wonderful spouse knew that I had pulled this from Carl. And so they made a point to get the audiobook because I, because I can't, there are no library copies of this. And that's due to the author who, <laughs> uh, who has said that they don't want their book to be accessible to public libraries because if they if people are going to read it, they want to make money from it, which fair enough, get your money, but also, you know, accessibility. Anyways, um, <laughs> so my spouse bought the audiobook for this and we listened to this the same day. I actually think they started the day before I did. And we both hated everything about this. It reads like a bad Star Trek episode. It's incredibly toxic about religion. And as a person who used to be a really like nasty militant atheist, I, <laughs> I, I read stuff like this that's so critical of religion in a way that is unkind and <laughs> unsympathetic and unempathetic. And it just infuriates me because it's like, yes, there are some bad things about religion, but there are bad things about all religions. And to just sit there and poke fun at things and be like, haha, isn't religion stupid? Doesn't it make people stupid? Well, no, it fucking doesn't. Um, this tried so desperately to be funny and I found it completely not, I, to be quite frank. And I think a lot of that has to do with me. I think that this book and I were never going to gel very well. It's, uh, it's the humor is not my kind of humor. It is just, it was just not funny. I didn't think it was funny and I didn't think it was good. And it is one of the biggest pieces of self-insert media I have maybe ever read in my life. It's, you can tell that this author has a fascination with, I can't remember what this particular kind of technology is called. Maybe it'll be up on screen here. Maybe not. And he, you can tell he has such a fascination with it. And he really wants to be able to be involved with anything like that. And so he, he imagined himself going out and just perpetuating himself into the universe and finding things. And from just his lens. And it was just, it was just not entertaining. It was not fun. I, I find the fact that, you know, whenever Bob starts perpetuating himself to be self-replicating, it, it's the stupidest freaking names that they, that the other Bobs give themselves. And the fact that in the audiobook, the one named Homer, named after Homer Simpson, it, it's, the narrator does an excellent job with this, but it is still, it was still very jarring and frustrating for me to sit there and have to listen to a shitty Homer Simpson, Simpson impression underscored with these horrible jokes and a plot that I really didn't give two fucks about. Um, this just, this was bad. This was bad. The only reason I'm not giving it a one star is that I feel like it feels a little disingenuous for me to come in for a book that was not for me from the ground up and just call it trash across all the platforms. I'll do it here because I have these strong feelings, but it felt a little bit I, I don't know. It just felt a little bit off to do on like Goodreads without acknowledging the fact that this and I, this and I were never going to get along. So it gets a begrudging two stars. But truly for me and for my taste, this is a one star. I cannot wait to get this out of my house. And the only good thing about reading it this past month is that I'm finally done with it and I don't have to see it sitting on my shelves and I don't have to dust it and I don't have to have it in my home taking up space. Okay, that's it. Got a little heated at the end. Um, that was my May wrap up. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to do algorithm things like comment, subscribe, and I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you again next Friday. Hopefully with, you know, just a little bit more happiness. Okay, bye.